Okay, so I brought in this sound effect, figured out where I wanted it to be. I went for my imported audio folder, got the Boeing sound effect, and put it in here. And then I raised the, or lowered the this white line. I opened it up here so I could see my file. I selected it. You can see that it turns from green green to white. And then I can move my decibel up or down. So initially it was at zero right around here. It was very loud. And I want to make that lower. So I took that and grabbed that white line and dragged it down. And now I can listen to it. And I think that's a little better in there. So now I want to bring in the crowd uh, noise. So I have this uh, crowd edit. Uh, mp3 file here and what I want to do is on the right hand side I mentioned earlier these are my video tracks and these are my audio tracks so I want to put in audio 3 I could close up audio 1 and 2 just to give myself a little more room so I just close those up for momentarily and then I see audio 3 is available so that's where I want to put the ambient uh, crowd noise on so I'm going to take that and drag that into place here. Um, I'm gonna do. A, uh, I was I wasn't zoomed out on my timeline, so I'm I'm putting it in at the seven second mark, and I don't want it there. So what I'm gonna do is select that and hit delete, and then I want to see my whole timeline as one. So the a quick way to zoom out and see your whole timeline is to hit the backslash key on your keyboard. That's located. You see the letter P. You see the two brackets, and then the far right key there is your backslash key. You hit that, and you can see your whole timeline. So if you look on your keyboard, you could also drag this um, to the right, and you'll see your whole keyboard also, your whole timeline. So now it starts at zero. It ends up at 1720, the length of this one. So one more thing, I want to take that and make sure I'm bringing in at track zero. And I have this so I can hear what I brought in there. Well, that's overpowering again, right? It's a little, we don't want to hear all that. We're just trying to give a little ambience to that uh, crowd. So what I'm going to do is open up this track by coming to the A3 and under on the below the A3 between A3 and master I'm gonna click on this and open it up so I can see my soundtrack and the white line here that's so this is a two channel it's a stereo soundtrack so that's why we're seeing two waveforms but they're they're equal. So what I'm gonna do is take that and drag that way down. And bring it way down here and then see what we have. Everyone listen up. I run a tight ship. Ah, put it back in it, stinky. <laughs> I did it fast too. <laughs> Very funny, Lulu. Yeah, it's even almost a little too much. I just wanna have real little ambience in there. I'm going to hit stop, and if I hit S here, it's, it, it goes solo the track, so I can hear just that track. So it has this S icon. M is for mute, if I don't want to hear that track at all, but I want to just hear what's going on in this track. I'll hit the S button, and let's see what... It's just supposed to put some ambience so it's just not flat air. So uh, that might be good. But, so, so it, but I don't want it to overpower my main. Okay, so I brought in the ambient sound. I brought in the sound effect. And then my video ends here at the 720, but my soundtrack keeps going. So what I want to do is fade it out. So... Um, it fades out to nothing. So to do that, 
I'm going to put my timeline indicator to where the video kind of ends. It, the video ends right there. 720. I'm going to back it up a second so it, it fades out for a second, maybe in two seconds. To back it up, it ends at, two, at 1720. If I want to go back two seconds, I would type in 1520. Right? That's two seconds before the end. So it kind of just fades out at the end there. So if I click on this, I could take out that 7 and type in 1520 and hit the re uh, turn button. So I'll put my timeline indicator 1520. And now I want to zoom, zoom up on this so I can see this line in this area a little better. So if I zoom up here, I'm going to go to about there. So I want to put keyframes in on my audio so it stays at this constant audio sound. This is a low sound, but it stays to here. And at this point, then I want it to fade out to zero to here. So then it just goes away. Um, to do that, to add a keyframes, you need to highlight the sound file you want to affect the same way we had to highlight the image that we wanted to affect in our um, size. So if we highlight this track and the difference between highlighted and not. If I click this one, that's highlighted. You can see this isn't highlighted, but I click it. It gets the white box around it. The, the waveform becomes white. Over here, they have a little triangle. And this has to work. You have to open up this. Um, panel here by taking those lines and opening it up so we can see these. These aren't visual, visible by default. You need to open this up to see these. And then it says add or remove keyframe. So we want to add a keyframe. So I'm going to click there and to put a keyframe in down here. Then I'm going to come to the end where the video ends here. And I'm going to add a second keyframe. So I have these two keyframes. So what I'm going to do is have it stay constant volume to here. Then at this second keyframe I put in, I'm going to drag that down as far as it can go. And that's as far as so it was low to start with, but now it's as down as far as it can go. So if I solo that track, we can hear what's going on. Maybe we can hear. Let's do a little bit. Well, it's really light, um, but what it's doing is fading out, going to zero there, because I've dragged that down as far as it can go. So I faded out that soundtrack. Um, I could maybe come in here and lift this up a little bit. And the, the, the problem with that is, yeah, that, that should be lifting it up as one piece. Let's see, yep. So I'll, I'll bring this up a little just so you can hear the difference. So you hear it fade out. So you can add a little fade into your, you can have a fade up if you wanted it to. If I want to come back here to the beginning, um, I could uh, come maybe to a one second into it. So I'll type in one semicolon zero zero. That's the same as saying one second. Puts my timeline indicator there. This is still highlighted. So I click in and add a keyframe there. And then... Um, Back it up a little bit. And I don't have to go right to the beginning. The nice thing about these keyframes, you can slide them easy enough. So I go about there, add a keyframe, and then take that keyframe I just added and slide it over to the left and down as far as it can go. And we'll get that little fade up. It was subtle, but it's a little fade in. So the music, it, I mean, that doesn't start right away. And it's doing for both channels. Even though it's only showing up here, it's doing for both of these channels. Okay. So that's uh, adjusting the sound. And the one last thing I want to do, I want to put a fade up, fade in of my visuals. So if it doesn't just start on stink, you just do a quick fade in um, there. So to do that, I'm going to put an effect on there. And to do an effect, we need to highlight the, 
the frame that we want to do the effect on, which is this first one. I'm going to come over here where my project window, you should see the effects window. If you're not seeing it, you can click on these arrows and you should be able to see effects here. But we want to come to where it says effects. We are going to do a video transition effect here. So we're going to come over here where it says video transition and twirl down that little triangle to the left of the folder. And in this case, we're going to do a dissolve effect. So I'm going to twirl that down. And the dis dissolve effect we want is a dip to black. So what that's saying is going to come from, come from black to open up our scene. And then we'll put this on our last frame and it will drop down to fade out. So the dip to black effect is under uh, video transitions, under dissolve. And then we want to choose dip to black. So I'm going to grab the icon again. Whenever we're grabbing something in Premiere, we want to grab it by the icon. And I'm going to take that and drag that over to the front of this first panel. And so what I ha what I just did there is shows it put this dip in here. I'm going to hit the play button. It fades up. I, I had the one track soloed. So I have this, I could take that off. We can see it. So we have. And then I can put that same fade in at the end, Sarah, as you were saying. And I might want to maybe drag this out. It's at, what is it, 1720, right? We came to. I can make it an even 18 seconds. So I can type in 18 semicolon zero zero. And I can extend this out to there. I could drag my keyframe for my audio out to there. And then I'll put a fade in, a, a, a black on this one. So I'm going to go dip to black and drag that to the far end of that. And it just kind of fades out, gives a, a nice ending to it by having that little fade out.